In this lesson, we'll explore the role of a DNS zone file. The concepts taught in this lesson are applicable to just about any cloud hosting provider. We'll be configuring a zone file on Linode.com. This page contains an example of what a zone file looks like. Up to this point, we've been accessing our default Apache web page using the server's IP address. But normally, we wouldn't want our website visitors to have to enter an IP address to access our site. We want them to be able to use a domain name, like mywebsite.com. This is where the DNS zone file comes in. The zone file contains various records. Each record serves a different purpose. For example, an A record defines the IP address that your domain name will resolve to. The MX record defines the mail server that will be responsible for handling emails sent to your domain name. Earlier in this course, we registered a domain name, mywebdevcourse.com. Of course, you registered a different one and you'll be using that if you're following along. Now we'll be creating a DNS zone file that points our domain name to our web server's IP address. To get started, click on the Linodes tab. From the main page, you can navigate to the DNS Manager. So click on this tab. The DNS Manager shows a listing of all the DNS zone files you currently have. You can see we have two here. If this is your first time using DNS Manager, you won't have any. To add a zone file, click on Add Domain Zone. Type in the domain name that you'd like to create the zone file for. So I'm going to enter the domain name I registered you're going to enter your domain. Now type in the administrator's email address in the SOA email. Next, select the server you want to apply the zone file to. So this will be the server that actually contains your website. And we're going to use the My the Node server we created. We also have the option of Linode inserting a few commonly used records for us. Make sure you leave this option selected as yes. So it saves us time from having to add them manually. We can always just remove the ones we don't need. Now go ahead and click add a master zone. As you can see, our zone file has been created with a variety of different records. The first record is the SOA record. SOA stands for Start of Authority. This record indicates that the DNS name server listed here is the best source of data for a specified domain name. So in this case, the name server is ns1.linode.com. So this is known as your primary DNS. The SOA email is the main administrative contact email for this domain. TTL stands for Time to Live. This setting tells other internet servers how long to cache a particular DNS entry. You can leave this setting as the default, which is 24 hours. This is a standard amount of time for most uh, DNS situations. To make changes to the SOA record, click the Settings link. You can make any updates on this form and click the Save Changes button in the event that you do need to make changes. But the default settings are just fine. So I'm going to go back. The next set of records are NS records, which stands for name servers. In addition to our primary name server, ns1.linode.com, we also have a set of secondary backup name servers in case the primary fails. This ensures your domain name remains functional and your emails are still processed if one or even two name servers fail, although the probability of that is highly unlikely. The amount of backup name servers will depend on the hosting provider. Uh, some will have two or three, and in this case, we have five. 
The MX record specifies the mail server responsible for accepting email messages on behalf of your domain. So if we had an email such as info at mywebdevcourse.com, the mail server listed here would be responsible for incoming mail and processing it. Since we haven't configured any email service for our domain name yet, we can delete this record for now. So just click the remove button and then click yes. The A and AAAA records are responsible for resolving our domain name, in this case mywebdevcourse.com, to our web server's IP address. The A record resolves to an IP address which is based on version 4 of the Internet Protocol, or IPv4. With IPv4, there are four sets of numbers ranging from 0 to 255. So in our case, 45, 79, 136, and 70. That is the IPv4 address for our web server. IPv4 addresses can accommodate a maximum of about 4 billion unique addresses. Now this has posed an issue because it's not enough for every device on Earth to have its own unique address. So for this reason, we have the AAAA records, which resolve to the new version, which is IPv6. This is a 128-bit address that allows for hundreds of trillions of unique addresses. And that's what the IPv6 address looks like compared to the IPv4. We have a couple of mail records here. And we don't require them because our server will not be responsible for handling incoming mail for our domain. So in the event that our web server did have a mail service installed, which we haven't configured because mail servers are extremely complicated to administer. So that's best left to a third party company to handle for you. And we're going to be using the Gmail uh, business mail service or Google mail service to process our emails later in this course. The, the business service does offer personalized email domain names. So for example, our email would still be me at mywebdevcourse.com, for example. So we'll go ahead and set the mail records for Google Mail servers at that time when we do that. So for now, I can delete the mail records, the mail A records, and the mail AAAA record. Let's make sure you do the right one. Another important point to mention is the host name. The reason we have a blank host name and a www host name is because people can access our web page using only our domain name, for example, mywebdevcourse.com, or using www.mywebdevcourse.com. So by creating a record for each form of these addresses, we ensure that both domain name variations resolve to the correct IP. To make changes to any of these records, just click the Edit button. And here we can make changes and just press Save Changes in the event that you do make them. I'll hit Back. Next, we have our CNAME record. CNAME records are used for subdomains. A subdomain is appended to the beginning of your normal domain name. So, for example, blog.mywebdevcourse.com or support.mywebdevcourse.com. For these subdomains to point to your website, you need to add them as CNAME records. So say we wanted to add a CNAME record for blog.mywebdevcourse.com. Just click Add New CNAME Record. The host name would be blog, and it would alias to mywebdevcourse.com, and just click Save Changes. And then we have our new CNAME record created. A TXT record can contain any arbitrary text data up to 1024 characters in length. TXT records are typically used for verification. Uh, for, for example, if you set up a business email with Google Apps, Google will need to verify you own your domain name. Now, in this case, mywebdevcourse.com. So to do this, they'll request you create a text record 
with an assigned string of characters, and that way they know you own the domain name. SRV records are beyond the scope of this course, uh, so there's no need to make any amendments there. 